Good morning, you guys. It is a cold, cold day. I am just carrying the ZV-1 to the bridge. I want to see how good this is as a standalone vlogging camera. Uh, I haven't had the best experience with it for vlogging. I've had a better experience in a studio setup with this camera. So I just want to go handheld and vlog with this camera all day with standard stabilization on. Hope you guys enjoy this. Do let me know how this camera looks, if the quality is actually better than the GoPros. Uh, I will still be using my GoPro and my action camera. I still think they're more durable when I'm out at sea, but this is for probably when I'm home and I'm vlogging in India. to the bridge. It is a beautiful day. So it's really really cold here in the East China Sea but it is a warm sunny day on the outside if you look at it. So the temperatures are down but the sun is out. The sea is super super glassy today which also means we're gonna get a lot of fishing traffic this evening. That pretty much happens every time you have calm weather. Fishing boats, well rough weather, heavy weather, strong winds, nothing stops them. So when you have sea as calm and as beautiful as this, it's definitely going to mean that you're going to get a ton of fishing traffic in the evening which is something that I'm totally dreading. You see what I mean when I said tons of fishing boats? It's crazy here in China. Okay, on a serious note, look at that guy right there. Look at that fishing boat. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see them. These are these giant Chinese fishing boats that will occupy the water and fill it up with a bunch of different trawling nets and trawling lines on the forward and the back of the boat. I spent the last half an hour fighting with fishing boats and believe me, it was not fun. I was exactly through the entire convoy of fishing boats, the entire fleet, it was insane. But it's also a lot of fun when you get through it because you'd really end up testing your navigation skills. I think for any navigator out there, the difficult part is not navigating through traffic, but navigating through heavy fishing traffic. If you can get through that, you're definitely going to be a better navigator in the future. So yeah, I am pretty proud of the maneuvers that I pulled off today. But uh, yeah, it's the last fishing boat right here. Check it out. Now one of the main reasons I started actually even vlogging on the ZV-1 today is because off late I had a subscriber on my channel who dropped in the comment where he asked me to recommend or to talk about the tech that I think seafarers should carry with them when they're joining their ship. It's got me thinking about all the tech that I carry with me when I join a ship and it's a lot, especially a lot of camera gear so I can make these vlogs. And one of the cameras that I haven't used as much on board is the Sony ZV-1. I've mainly used my action cameras like my GoPros. Now I've been using the DJI Action 2, I've used the GoPro Max a lot, but the ZV-1 hasn't been used all that much and I actually bought it thinking that I would use it quite a bit, but I really didn't. And that's exactly why I thought I'm going to start downsizing on my tech and I'm also going to talk to you guys about the tech that I think you guys need to carry by showing you what all I've carried and uh, maybe helping you build a kit of your own. Now don't get me wrong, the ZV-1 is a fantastic vlogging camera, it's a great camera on the overall, it can do a whole bunch of stuff, but one of the main reasons why I haven't been using this is because of the field of view. It's a 24 to 70 lens, which for general purpose shooting is fantastic, but it doesn't have an ultra wide lens. And I'm somebody who's used to filming on action cameras, the ultra wide lens on my iPhone a lot, and I'm just not used to having such a tight focal length when I'm vlogging. And another reason why I don't use this camera half as much is because when you're vlogging, 
other than the field of view what you really need is image stabilization now this camera does have fantastic optical plus digital stabilization but it crops in like crazy when you use it especially when shooting in 4k so when it does apply that extra crop the lens actually crops into a point where it becomes a 30 millimeter equivalent lens which isn't wide enough for me and if i have to use it like this in the standard stabilization mode the video is a little bit too jittery for my liking i like stable video i like the look of stabilized video which you get on action cameras and i don't get that on this camera so that is a little bit of a drawback i also want to talk about another drawback that i found with this camera which is basically the lack of time lapse video mode and this camera has a lot of pros to it and we're going to get into that in a few seconds but i shoot a large amount of time lapses in all my vlogs what's actually better for me is if i have a camera that's stabilized and can shoot time lapse video but i don't have to compile thousands and thousands of photographs and convert them into a time lapse myself because the post processing time for that is insane and this camera does shoot time lapses but only in photo mode so you have to basically post process all of those images it's going to be a thousand plus images per one voyage and actually convert that into a time lapse which is a lot of work and nobody really has the time for that nowadays don't get me wrong the zv1 is a great camera for what it is it is an amazing content creation camera and that's exactly why i want to start using it a lot more i have tried shooting a time lapse in this video on the zv1 and i'm going to do the post processing that's required and that's basically because the zv1 has something that my gopros and my iphone doesn't have and that is image quality it has a larger sensor in it which i'm absolutely in love with it has the ability to blur out the background optically not digitally the zv1 comes the closest to giving me that professional look in my videos and that's exactly why i want to start using it a lot more now another major pro on the zv1 is the ability to use full manual control and the fact that it's an actual camera so i don't have to worry about dropping my iphone it is my iphone i still use it for 10 other things than just filming and also the controls on the zv1 are definitely a lot better than my gopros because gopros are tiny cameras ZV-1 is definitely a more ergonomic camera. It definitely gives you the feel of a retro camera and it's it's pretty great on all these fronts. Now I know this video is turning into a video where it seems like I'm convincing myself on why I own this Sony ZV-1 and why I need to use it a lot more. But that's the thing about tech, right? You need to be convinced about the tech that you're carrying, that you're actually going to make use of it, and that you actually need it. Because carrying a large amount of tech products with you when you're coming on board a ship can eventually feel like a load at some point. You have to take care of these products. You have to maintain them. You have to use them, and you should actually need them. It's really hard for me to tell you what tech you need to carry because you need to be convinced about whether you need the product or not. So before I actually leave the bridge. Look at that view you guys. It is a fantastic day at sea. It is a gorgeous evening. You get to see some sights that you would never be able to see on land. We're going to head down to my cabin and I'm going to run you through all the tech that I carry with me every time I'm joining a ship. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed the little B-roll that I showed you of all the tech products that I carry on board my ship. And well, this video is not going to be a very detailed video. I'm just going to break down the basics that you need to carry with you every time you're joining a ship, so that you can get through your contract, keep yourself entertained, and also stay productive while you're out at sea when you're in your cabins and spending time by yourself. I'm going to start off with the base of everything, my main machine. This guy right here, this is the M1 MacBook Pro. This is the 2020 model. It's the regular 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, not the new ones that have just come out. I am super excited to see how good the new MacBook Pros are with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip. But like I said, when I made a video on the M1 MacBook Pro, I'm going to link it in description or up here in the cards. If you guys missed that video, this computer is almost five times faster than my Intel MacBook Pro computer. And it 
eats through the 4K, the 5K footage that I film on my GoPros as well as on the ZV-1 as well as the footage that I film on my iPhone and it also works brilliantly well for music production and for any other task that I would actually throw at it. It's also super portable, super small, super light to carry around with you and I've barely ever heard the fans kick in. The M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air from 2020 are perfectly fine for you. You don't need the M1 Pro or the M1 Max chips on your computers. They are extremely powerful. They give you a little bit more speed but this computer can do absolutely everything and it does it faster than 90% of the other computers on the market. It's portable and it's powerful. Now as a seafarer, I don't believe you always need to carry a laptop with you because if you're an officer or an engineer and if you have any paperwork to do on the vessel, you have computers in the engine control room, cargo control room. There are tons of computers that are connected to a network on board which basically let you work within the ship's network and it's a lot easier to do your work on those computers. You don't really need to work on your own personal computer in your cabin. So according to me, you don't really need a laptop. What you basically need is a device that can keep you entertained, keep you creative, can keep you productive. But to be honest, you just need a device that has a big screen that can keep you entertained for you so that you can watch movies and TV shows while you're out on the ship. Probably listen to some music. And for that, I normally have my entertainment device, which is this guy over here. This is the M1 iPad Pro from 2021. This is the 11 inch. All the power that you can imagine on an iPad, you have it in here. Apple Pencil here on top. I'm rocking the iPad in the Unicorn Beetle subcase, which is a super hard protective case. It covers all the corners. It gives it a good fat lip of protection up ahead. This case is not going to let it flex at all. The iPad is my backup video editing and photo editing device. I do a large amount of photo editing on the iPad. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos on the M1 iPad Pro. I do have a couple of ideas. I want to show you how this device keeps me productive and entertained at all times and how it fits into my daily life. So if you want to see that video, definitely let me know. So you can do a lot of productive work on this device. It's somebody who enjoys playing mobile games. Well, the iPad Pro has a 120 hertz refresh rate screen and it's got the fastest processor that you can actually have in a mobile computing device, one of the fastest processors now. So you can get through any game on this device without having any issues. In case something happens to my MacBook and I still need a device that I can edit on, I use this. If I want to watch any TV shows and listen to music, this is the device that I go to. I don't open up my MacBook for that. It just stays on the table aside. You guys already know I love my games at home. I'm always playing on my Xbox and my Nintendo Switch. And of course, I have my Nintendo Switch. This is another tech product that I carry with me everywhere I go. It is a portable console. This is the original Nintendo Switch. I didn't really find the need to upgrade to the Nintendo Switch version 2 which had the better battery life and that's pretty much all it had. Switch OLED is out and it does have a better screen and I do play 99% of my games in handheld mode on the Nintendo Switch so maybe I'll go for the Switch OLED because that screen is just so much more immersive but I'm not sure yet and I haven't upgraded yet. I have a whole ton of games on the Nintendo Switch if you guys are interested in seeing what I have right off the bat. I have Astral Chain which is what I've been playing right now. I I've been playing Metroid Redux, FIFA, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, Xenoblade Chronicles, the new Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered Edition, Pokemon Snap, which has been a fantastic game to go back to, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which is a fantastic remake. It's also out of the PlayStation and the Xbox. Uh, Super Mario, 3D World, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Sword, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, uh, Animal Crossing. These are just games that I have on the top of my head. That days when I come to my cabin and I have videos to edit, I have photos to edit, and I just don't feel like doing anything because you are so tired sometimes with the amount of work that you have on board. I just lie down, uh, play some music in the background on my iPad, I log onto the Nintendo Switch and I just game for a while until I actually finally pass out. This guy is super important. This is a Samsung T5 SSD. Uh, it is a one terabyte version SSD. It's super small. This is actually a hard drive, you guys. It's a solid state drive. It's basically a more rugged version of your traditional hard drives if you guys don't know what SSDs are. It's really handy because of the read and write speed. It's fantastic. I also carry this guy which is a SanDisk 128 GB flash drive. It's basically flash storage. It's 128 gigs. I render out the video and it's ready. I'll put it onto this and I'll also take a backup of all my videos onto this flash drive in case this fails on me. So this flash drive is dedicated only for that. So yeah, storage. Really important. This little guy is my favorite portable light. This is made by GoPro. Charges via USB-C. It's a great portable light that I can throw on top of my camera into the cold shoe mount and I can turn on the light like I have right now and get a little bit more light on my face. It's a good portable light to have even when you're walking around the ship because it's waterproof. It's also intrinsically safe. It's completely rubber coated. Even if it falls, it's not going to burst. Nothing's going to happen. So yeah, great light. It's powerful. It's really good. Speaking of more tech, I think a large amount of my tech revolves around creating this content for you guys on this channel. This is my little GoPro carry case. I got this case with the Hero 9 Black. This case is where I house all of my cameras. 
has I have the GoPro Shorty inside. It's a really handy vlogging stick. It's also a tripod. This is my go-to vlogging stick for GoPros. And I also have this little adapter now, which is the magnetic adapter for the DJI Action 2, which is my current action camera of choice because my GoPro died on me. My new action camera, which is the DJI Action 2. It is a fantastic little camera. It's a beast for what it is. Honestly, if I compare this to the GoPro Hero 9, the image quality, the video quality is similar on a lot of fronts. Cooler design. I love the look of this. It's modular. Other than that, reliability wise, it's been pretty reliable. The GoPro 9 was one of the most unreliable GoPros on the market for me. I had the GoPro 8 and the GoPro 7. They barely ever froze on me, but this guy froze and froze and lagged and finally died on me. Although they fixed all that with the GoPro 10, so yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. I also have my old Hero 9, which works once in 15 days. But yeah, this camera helped me film almost 60 to 70 videos on this channel. So it is sentimental and I am going to bring this home and just keep it at home. Inside this case, I also have my trusty 360 camera. A lot of the top down shots, the flippy shots, the 360 shots that you see on this channel, which I love getting for you guys, is on the GoPro Max. The GoPro Max is still my go-to 360 camera because it's a GoPro. It's super well built. It's versatile. It can work with one lens it can be used for vlogging in single camera mode it's 360 the workflow is fantastic and basically i love my gopros i love the gopro app i love the color science on gopros for action cameras and the durability is great the audio is better than most of the action cameras on the market on the gopro max you have six mics on it i have a whole review on the camera i love it it's a great 360 camera so i also have that in here and of course you cannot have a gopro kit without spare gopro batteries good part is these batteries will be useful for me when i pick up my gopro 10 so i do have three batteries and I will get a new battery for my GoPro 10 that gives me four batteries, so I'm pretty sorted. And going back a couple of steps, we did talk about the iPad Pro. I forgot to mention this guy here. This is the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. Fantastic keyboard. It's magnetic. The iPad Pro just connects to it. It has a trackpad. It pretty much converts your iPad into a MacBook replacement on a lot of fronts. Typing on the iPad becomes a lot easier. If I'm editing on the iPad Pro and I'm using LumaFusion, I will use the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard. It just makes the entire workflow a lot easier having a keyboard and a touch screen and a pencil so precision is great. I use this a lot more when I'm home to be completely honest not on the ship not that much but if you're somebody who's looking at just carrying a tablet on board and you don't want to carry a laptop and if the iPad Pro or the iPad Air which is the cheaper version which also works with this keyboard is your go-to. This keyboard is fantastic definitely definitely pick it up it's going to give you the best experience of having two-in-one and it'll make your life super super easy just to have this in your ass. Speaking of filmmaking gear the one camera that I use more than any other camera on the market is my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Yes, I know the 13s are out. Yes, I will be upgrading to the 13 Pro, so stay tuned for that review. So I do have my iPhone in a Moment case. This case is made by the brand Moment. I am affiliated to Moment. I'm a part of the Moment squad. I do have a bunch of Moment lenses that pretty much attach to the back of my phone, giving me a better field of view, giving me uh, anamorphic. What you just saw, the B-roll that I just shot of all my tech equipment was shot on this lens, which is the Moment anamorphic lens. These are great lenses for video, but they're also great lenses for photo. I also think if you're somebody who's unsure of whether you want to buy your first camera and uh, whether you want to get into creating content with your phone and you just want to like take your phone photography and phone videography to a whole different level then these lenses are the way to go. I personally started my YouTube channel on an iPhone and I eventually got into GoPros and I fell in love with them and the iPhone and the GoPros started working hand in hand and now I also have a ZV-1 in the mix. Moment lenses. Definitely invest in them. They're fantastic. Apple Watch Series 6. Uh, yeah, I'm on the Nike edition. Series 6, 44 mm Definitely my go-to watch for, for everything. Uh, it's great for fitness tracking, which I've been slacking on really bad this year. Uh, long story, we'll get into that in another video. But uh, yeah, it is a fantastic little watch. It can control my iPhone. I can reply to text messages on it. I can control the music that I'm playing on my AirPods. Uh, it's basically fantastic. It's super versatile. Changing out the straps and putting a leather strap on this can give it a more formal look if you're looking for something like that. Uh, it's an accessory that I never thought I needed, but I've had an Apple Watch for the last three years and I can't think about wearing any other watch anymore. Speaking of wireless plugs, this is my favorite pair of wireless earbuds. These are the AirPods. As you can see, I have NC engraved on them. This was basically custom ordered from the Apple store. These are the AirPods Pro from last year. They are the 2020 edition. They come with noise cancellation, transparency, spatial audio. Apple really knows how to tune their audio devices. They have grown so much as an audio company. It's, it's fantastic. They've done a really, really good job to give you high fidelity earphones. I think AirPods are great. The AirPods 3 are a cheaper alternative. I think the Google Pixel Buds are fantastic and the Samsung Galaxy Buds are fantastic too. Uh, and so if you're in those ecosystems, definitely try them out because the convenience with your Android device is going to be great, just like the convenience of 
this with my iOS devices is fantastic. Wireless earbuds are great. I never go anywhere without them. So not the least, I have my tech organizer of choice. This is the Peak Design Travel Pouch. It is truly amazing. I know it's not focusing. It's made of ballistic nylon. Super well built. The zippers are high quality. It can hold a large amount of stuff. Now, to be completely honest, inside of it right now, I don't have too much of stuff because a lot of my chargers and my plugs and my tech accessories are already outside and they're in use because well I'm still on board and I've already unpacked but inside this I carry my MacBook charger my iPad charger at the moment I have my spare phone on the inside I have my Rode Wireless Go microphones which are my wireless microphones of choice uh, I should be using them right now but I just stuck to using the ZV-1 onboard mics which also sound pretty great I also have the C dongle of choice which I plug into my iPad and my MacBook you can never have too many charging cables for your devices so I have like two or three lightning to USB-C cables I have cables for my Nintendo switch I have cables for my GoPro I have cables for my ZV-1 this is great this can fit a MacBook charger inside of it it can fit a Nintendo switch charger inside of it probably gonna do that closer to when I'm leaving the ship when I actually do back up everything on my desk a fantastic tech organizer if you're looking for one peak design the build quality the look super clean super minimal I love it of course you need a power bank I think this goes without saying, majority of you already have a power bank, so it's okay. Uh, this is the Nintendo Switch power bank made by Anchor. Overall, really great, durable devices. Uh, this was a collaboration with Nintendo Switch, and I absolutely love the Switch logo on one side and the Anchor logo on the other side. USB-A power delivery charging port, and it has a USB-C high power delivery charging port. This can charge up my iPad Pro. Uh, this can also charge up my Nintendo Switch. It can charge up my AirPods, my iPhone. It's 13,500 milliamps, so I think that's a big bonus to have something that's so tiny. It fits in your palm, but can charge up multiple devices at once. So yeah, it's great I use this all the time and it's really good if you have a Nintendo Switch and you can also play your Nintendo Switch while charging it if you're plugged into this so that's fantastic last but not the least this is my GoPro super large travel casey it's super rugged really cool on the inside I just have a bunch of thumb screws I have the GoPro 9 media mod which is useless now because I don't have a hero camera anymore I also have the GoPro bite mount which is fantastic I can use this with the DJI action so it's really great I also have the DJI action accessories lying here on the inside the magnetic mounts which are really really great I have GoPro sticky mounts I have spare GoPro charging cables I have a set of ND filters by Telesyn for the GoPro 9 which fortunately are also going to be able to be used on the GoPro 10 because the dimensions of the lens haven't changed it as well as the media mod I can really reuse it with the Hero 10. So yeah, I put in all the little accessories into this, the tiny GoPro accessories. I also have GoPro 3-way and the GoPro jaw flex clamp. Just a second. 3-way jaw flex clamp. Super useful accessories. Really good to mount your action cameras in places that you would never dream of. So yeah, that's basically all the tech equipment that I carried on board this year uh, so that I can keep myself entertained while I'm on board. I can keep creating content for you guys. Life at Sea Season 2 is almost coming to an end. I'm due to sign off very very soon. And of course, last but not the least, the Sony ZV-1 which is a great sit-down camera, a great camera for A-roll. Overall, uh, if I was filming this video indoors on my GoPro, footage would be a lot noisier. I also wouldn't have image quality like I do right now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope this video helps you guys plan how to pack your tech bag, what tech items and what tech products you guys want to be carrying with you when you want to go out to sea. Do hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what more videos you want to see. Drop in a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Peace.